Across the nation, protesters filling the streets after a grand jury clears an NYPD officer in the chokehold death of Eric Garner. Justice for Eric Garner! Justice for Eric Garner! Justice for Eric Garner! Justice for Eric Garner! Dozens in New York City alone were arrested for blocking busy streets and highways. We are joined now by former mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani. Mr. Mayor, thank you for being with us. Good morning. What was your reaction after the grand jury decided not to indict the officer? Did well, my, right? re my reaction was, uh, I, I don't know all the facts, mm -hmm. so I would have to withhold uh, judgment. I'd have to read the grand jury transcript. Uh, Are we going to get to? Uh, I think uh, district the district attorney wants to... Uh, He's asked wants to do permission. that. He happens to be a, I should say, let you know, he's a good, fr very close friend of mine who I've known for years. Uh, he's a former assistant district attorney in Manhattan. He's an expert lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's a great lawyer, an extraordinarily fair man. Uh, so I, ha I have to imagine this case was presented uh, just in a very professional way, and the grand jury reached a result that uh, I'm sure they believe was right. I've I've been before hundreds of grand juries uh, as the as the prosecutor, mm -hmm. not uh, you know not not, not as a defense. Uh, yeah, but, sure. Uh, and I have always found them to be extraordinarily conscientious citizens. They take an oath and they take this very seriously. And all these attacks on them, I find to be really uh, horrible. One of the things the mayor and uh, Sharpton and the others are doing, they are they are tearing down respect for a criminal justice system that goes back to England in the 11th century. You know what? We've got a soundbite to play. There is the mayor yesterday. want to play it for you and see, um, Mayor uh, Giuliani, whether or not you would ever say this. Listen. There are so many families in this city who feel that each and every night. Is my child safe? And not just from some of the painful realities crime and violence in some of our neighborhoods, but they're safe from the very people they want to have faith in as their protectors. We're not just dealing with a problem in 2014. We're not dealing with years of racism leading up to it or decades of racism. We are, leading, we are dealing with centuries of racism that have brought us to this day. That is how profound the crisis is. Okay, so he's talking about racism there, and he's well, also throwing the NYPD under the bus. Well, I mean, this helps to create uh, this, a this atmosphere of protest and sometimes even violence. First of all, there was no racism in this case. I mean, th there's no indication this was, if this man were a white man resisting arrest at that same size, the same thing would happen. If I recall correctly, there was an African-American sergeant on the scene. Female. Observing, in charge of the entire situation, never did anything to stop She could it. have said, stop, uh, stop. Uh, 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 observing the technique that was used, uh, as far as I know, now again, I haven't seen the grand jury mm -hmm. minutes, she did nothing to interrupt it. That might have weighed in the grand jury decision. But to suggest that racism was involved here, just because it's a white man and a black man, and then also to talk about families worried about their children, there are a handful of police shootings of blacks. A handful. I don't know the exact percentage. Right. Different cities, 1%, 2%, 3%. 96% percent of the time, it's a black child being killed by a black. So this is like you have two streets. 96% of your accidents take place on one street. 2% take place on the other. And the mayor is telling his son, worry about the one with the 2%, not the one with the 96%. So, so Mr. Mayor... So if he, if he wants to train... A uh, young black man and how to avoid being killed in the city. You can talk about police. Mm -hmm. No, police should never kill anybody unjustifiably. Right. I've put them in jail when that happens. But you should spend 90% of your time talking about the way they're actually probably going to get killed, which is by another black. Uh, uh, to to avo avoid that fact, to avoid that fact, I think, is racist. His, uh, he's in a mixed marriage, as everybody knows, and his son is like President Obama, uh, half black, half white, and he went into his own personal story, and how I tell my son how to act differently and make sure that you're not going to be a target. So was, was that appropriate in your mind for a public official well, if to bring his to, own If he family? wants to tell his son to act appropriately with the police, everybody should. Black fathers, white fathers, Hispanic fathers, and mixed race fathers, we should all tell our children to act appropriately with the police. I was always told the policeman is always right. I mean, there's a good reason for it. He's got a gun. You don't argue with a police officer. Well, Charlie Rangel said that this is a cancer, in fact. Take a listen. It's totally impossible to believe that someone can die and nobody is indicted. It is the cancer of racial 
hatred in this country by a handful of people that's tolerated by most people, including good police officers. I could take the DA to the grand jury, really, and, and get an indictment of him for not reporting what his job was and how he failed so far. He's playing the race card, too. But playing the race card, also, the first statement is completely ignorant, that somebody could die and no one gets indicted. I mean, I don't know Where? if Charlie's a lawyer or not, but how about an accident? <laughs> People right. die. And oh, you, yeah. don't, you, don't, you don't always indict someone because mm -hmm. somebody dies. There's a traffic accident. Maybe it's caused by the person who actually dies. Sure. What about the video? Where it's it an absurd, it's a totally absurd statement. Only intended was absurd. to inflame people. Yeah. And, and it gives people a totally ignorant view of the law and the complexity of the law. The grand jury goes back to the 10th century. And it, it, is, it protects people. It protects people against indicted, being indicted incorrectly. It protects innocent people. Maybe... This police officer is innocent. Well, should an innocent man go to jail? It, Let's read the transcript and find out. The mayor should be talking about patience, calm. Let's take a look at this. And then the mayor should be spending 96% of his time on the way people in that community are actually victimized, if he really cares about them. I put the police in the places in New York where people are being killed to stop people from being killed. I didn't put them on Park right. Avenue. If I had put him on Park Avenue, I'd have been a racist. And homicides went down in that no, community. Uh, when between you did that. Mayor Bloomberg and I, I would say we probably saved more b black African American lives in New York City than any two mayors in the history of the city. Okay, so you've got advice there for the current mayor. Meanwhile, what's your advice for Al Sharpton? Here he is now calling for a national march in the wake of what happened in New York City and in Ferguson. How many people have to die? That's right before people understand this is not an illusion. This is a reality that America has got to come to terms with. This is going to be a winter that we're going to freeze out police brutality in this country. Eric Garner, Michael Brown, enough is enough. Is that helpful? Uh, uh, if you were talking about black on black crime, with the same passion, the same intention, the same money we put behind it, uh, as he does uh, the few uh, situations where police shoot someone, then maybe we'd be doing something constructive. Both things need attention, but one needs a lot more attention than the other because one accounts for 96% of the way in which somebody is killed. And let's just bring this up. Uh, of the 23 jurors, uh, 60, uh, 60 have to be there, but uh, at least five... Uh, at least five were black, nine were non-white, and 14 yeah, the, the, were white. The racist part of this is completely outrageous. You, the, 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 um, the video, for just the untrained eye, could create questions about whether there should or should be an indictment. What do you think of the video? Indi I'd, have to, I'd have to read the rest of the transcript. I, I probably believe it's correct decision because I know grand juries and I know the district attorney so well, and he's such a, such a professional. But to be fair, you'd have to read the transcript. The part of this that is completely outrageous are these statements that make this a racial incident, when without any doubt this was not a racial incident. Right. The, the, the presence of the black sergeant proves that, and the fact that if, if, a, if another man that size resisted arrest, uh, the same thing would have happened. And remember, in both of these cases, uh, Mr. Brown had committed at least two felonies, possibly three, uh, during that incident. So the police officer was dealing with a criminal. And in this case, the police officer was dealing with a criminal who was resisting arrest. Maybe if Mr. Brown hadn't committed his crimes right. and this gentleman hadn't resisted arrest, they wouldn't be dead, dead today. All right. Rudy Giuliani, thank you very much for coming in thank on you. this busy Thursday. Well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, sir.